Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with your co-host, the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice, and his wife, Jeannie. Michael and Jeannie share with you the wisdom of the ancient Aramaic internal process of forgiveness. They offer tools and support five days a week. They will support you in building a solid foundation within yourself to live in pure love. In Aramaic, Rachma. Michael is the author of So Why Is This Happening to Me Again? For more information on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.whyagain.com. And now your co-host, the forgiveness doctor, Dr. Michael and Jeannie Rice. To the brightness within you and the truth that Hi, and welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice. Today is a Memorial Day celebration 360. And Michael will talk a little about that here in a moment. Our calling number is 646-200-4169. Press 1, that puts you in queue to speak to Michael. And Dr. Tim is with us this morning already. And welcome, Michael. Thank you, sweetie. It's a delight to be here, a delight to have everyone who's on the show, and we are delighted and honored to have Dr. Tim with us, as usual, and uh, hope all is well in your world, sir. What kind of exciting things are happening? Well, it's Wednesday morning, which means last night we had our support group, and that went beautifully, as usual. I uh, shared results of my mind shifter that you gave me last week and the worksheets I did and some other energy work I did which had pain moving all over my back for a couple of days and then just leaving. So we discussed how that works and the need to be willing to go through that without a lot of um, alcohol and drugs and distraction and eating and other numbing out behaviors. And... um, and we discussed the issues of um, how physical pain is the uh, the alarm system telling us that our our emotions are being denied and suppressed and need to be removed, and how the the emotions are the alarm system telling us our thoughts are off target. So it was a very uh, it was a productive group. It was the first part of your lecture, Empowered to Heal, which is another one of your videos where you were really on that night years ago. Uh It was wowing the crowd. So uh, lots and lots of good work, lots of good discussion, and lots of energy moving, and just just another fabulous day to be alive and be on the team. Cool. I should probably go back and listen to those videos uh, and see what I've forgotten that I knew. I know that the few times that I have listened to some of my older material, I, I go, oh, my God, did I know that back then? I remember knowing that 20 years ago. What? Where did that come from? It's yeah, this, kind of fun. this is one where you're discussing things, and it sounds like you had been studying um, what the bleep do we know and down the rabbit hole. Um except for the fact that it was many years before those movies came out. So you're you're talking about the quantum potential and the out of the potential of the quantum soup, things will manifest for us based on what energies are most resonant within our minds because it sends out energy that interacts with what's out there and solidifies it and has it show up in our world as as though it's solid. And um, so it's a fabulous lecture. I highly recommend it to people, and I, I enjoy it every time it comes up in our rotation. Again, in our support group, we watch all of the, I forget whether it's 12 or 14 videos that we have, in, and we watch them in rotation, and as soon as we get done, we start them up again. Cool. 
Well, maybe you want to check what number you have because we've now got a total of 15. If there are any you don't have, I'll be glad to send them to you so that you've got them to put in the rotation. So yeah, I think, we've got a I think one that we don't have is the um, naturopathic keys to health. Uh-huh. And I don't know how, because well, I know the last time you were here I got one of those from you, but it, what must have happened was somebody desperately needed it and I loaned it to them and never got it back. But Because that does happen sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that happens all the time, Tim. I, I can't tell you how many times I've I've had people who come back and they buy book after book. Well, I loaned it to somebody and they promised to bring it back. And then when I talked to them, they said, well, I had a friend and they needed to, and so they went to talk to the friend and the friend said, well, but I had a friend that needed to, and and I mean, I've, I literally traced one book. I remember several years ago, I traced a book from, uh, I think it was up in Wisconsin that they bought it, and they sent it to a friend in Texas. The friend in Texas sent it to another friend in Texas who sent it to somebody in the Middle East, who sent it to somebody in Michigan. And I forget where it ended up, but it, it did about, I, I traced that book. I followed its path, and it, it did about 10 different sets of hands. So the chance when you run the book out or a DVD out of getting it back is pretty slim because of course people go urgent I, you know i know somebody really needs this and and so it's it's fun to fun to play with fun to watch and uh it's it's fun to see how stuff that i was doing 20 30 40 years ago and people looked at me sideways like i was some kind of wacko today is becoming pretty much common knowledge it's just you know it's it's in the culture it's becoming second nature and uh that's pretty gratifying and there are a few wrinkles that um that we have an understanding this work basically based on what Yeshua put together 2,000 years ago and then tying it in with some of the modern physics that um, that I haven't seen show up yet anywhere else in understanding. And uh, so it's cool to uh, to do that and just to keep advancing in the understanding and the, the sharing of it. It's like uh, it's finally gelling on the planet. It's really cool down here in South Florida. There, five different support groups either going or in process of being formed. We'll actually be doing two of them tomorrow night and the next night. Uh, we did one of them last Wednesday. And um, it's just exciting to watch how it's developing and how many people are are tapping in. And, of course, the objective, if you're new to the show, is to uh, to shift and create a space on planet Earth that's safe for human life to show up. Uh, to eradicate war, to eradicate the insanity from our own minds and the minds of everyone around us. And, of course, what's insanity? Insanity is the ability to hold any form of hostility or fear and think that what you're seeing and feeling is rational and is about somebody else. That's insanity. And and what it costs us to be insane is our human lives and our ability to consciously create our lives so and you know and i'm talking about all of us I, i'm not talking about anybody having been finished with the process yet you go back two thousand years ago to the man named yeshua he's dealing with thousands of generations of his genetics and and he says the things i do you too can do in greater and so here we are we're each doing our work on an ongoing basis and if you if this conversation appeals to you our invitation to you is to become part of the team that changed the world. How are you going to do that? Here's how you're going to do it. You're going to tap into the website. You're going to get the worksheet process, the forgiveness process, and you're going to start to actually use it. I mean, actually put the pen to the paper and use the tool. And as you use the tool, watch how the hostility and fear that you today have the capacity to experience starts to drop away. It doesn't drop away when you talk about somebody else. It doesn't drop away when you blame somebody else. It doesn't drop away when you hold the belief that what you're feeling belongs to somebody other than you. It drops away when you have the ability to be responsible for and to move from your field all forms of hostility or fear. I mean all forms. Not, well, I have this one little holdout around this one person who really is the problem, but to get to the point where you're you're willing to own and to remove all forms of hostility or fear. When you do that, what shows up in your physiology is your human life. The only thing that inhibits that from happening is any form of hostility or fear, which never belongs in you. And we define a human life as hold a newborn child, you know exactly what human life is. As we spoke about yesterday, Yeshua defines human life very clearly in, in pretty much precisely the same way as we are. He says, these children, 
let them come to me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Now, somebody else delivers a different message that, that's just insane based in their own projections and their own unresolved issues. Yeshua is really clear. The child is the kingdom. The child is the perfection of human life created by the creator. Nothing needs to be done in order to fix the child. Now, do we each need to own as we grow what goes on in our genetics, what defiles us, and move it out? Yes. Please, let's teach the children from the beginning how every time some form of hostility or fear comes up in them, they can be freed from that hostility and fear. And as that happens, everything starts to change. And we're here to bring about that change. So we're delighted to be sharing with you. If you want to access the technology, please go to our website, www.whyagain.com. And on the right-hand side, there's a link that says Download Worksheets. That link, the first seven links under that section, will give you the whole story of how the forgiveness process operates. And so we're delighted that you're here, and uh, we're delighted to be sharing the tools with you. Jeannie, do we have anybody, anything happening in the chat room or anyone uh, calling in with a question? No, nobody has their hand up. There's several people out there just listening. If you're on the switchboard, oh, a hand just went up. Area code 541, you're on the air. Oh, hi, it's Julie from Ashland. Hello. Hi, Hello, Julie. Lady. Hi. Hey, um, you know, I've, I've finally figured out how to listen to archive shows on the computer, <laughs> so I was. Awesome. And I was listening to one that Patricia was on two or three days ago. Oh, uh, wasn't that awesome? Oh yeah, it was beautiful, and and uh, and all three people. I I, did, I haven't listened to the whole thing, but I believe it was Richard, and then Carrie, and then Patricia. Um, you know, and I'm just I'm just uh, I'm trembling with fear and total joy that there are people this work going, people doing this work. And I just want to say that um, I'm becoming aware of my ego <laughs> in the sense that I've always heard people say that sometimes and quite often the ego is who's doing the spiritual work and so really there's no spiritual work being done. And I'm noticing that part of myself. I'm in that right now in this moment, noticing that um, my ego really is smart and really good everything and um and then and then I don't know what it is but that's part of the block that's part of the block for me doing the work at the level I know I can do I just know I can do this work but it's um it's that ego wanting to keep it at its level of ability and so I Well there's a, to can I break there. in there? Can I break yeah. in for a second? There's an awesome section in The Course in Miracles uh, that speaks about this thing we call the ego, which I like to use the initials E-G-O, edging love or God out. God is love. E-G-O, edging God out. And it speaks about this, and, and oftentimes we speak about the ego as though it has a will of its own and has an ability or can choose anything. And the section in The Course that refers to that says, you trained it in its testimony and as it gave it back to you, you convinced yourself that what it saw was true. You did this to yourself. Acknowledge this, and all effects of your mistakes will disappear. So when we train, you know, the ego comes forward as though it's got this will. Oh, I, I want this, or I don't want that, or I'll do this, or I'll do that. Or, and all it is is literally a database that's been filled with all the thoughts of all of our generations. It has no substance or existence except as a memory in cells. But because it can create pictures and make up a whole world, that is, a set of pictures between our ears, the world we see, we think that what it shows us is true. Everything, everything, everything based in any form of hostility or fear 
that comes into your mind as a picture or the world that you see is a product of what's going on in your multi-generational database and has no truth whatsoever. And it is forgiveness that allows you to disavow that state and to dissolve it, collapse it. And the forgiveness worksheet, the reality management process, is about being used regularly enough. And, of course, this non-being ego-based mind, non-being self, will convince you that there are 8 billion reasons in the naked city for why you can't collapse it. You're too busy, you're, you're, you're not capable, you're not smart enough, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, it won't work. You know, nah, nah, nah. It's got a million stories. And the truth is, if you will simply put the pen to the paper and forgive on a consistent, regular, daily basis, each time you do, you will collapse it. You will collapse it, you will collapse it, you will collapse it until you get to the point where the damn thing just shuts up. <laughs> Otherwise, it's got every excuse you've ever trained into it that will tell you why it can't be done. I really appreciate you reminding me of that part in The Course in Miracles because I've read that and my ego gets it, you know, and I, I do get it. This is exciting for me that I'm actually... Uh, um, Aware of what you said, pretty much. I'm going to re-listen. But, you know, I feel like the power of me being able to now, you know, write this part of the story of overcoming that which I've written before. And and not doing it with the same device that started taking over writing it. And I know I'm sounding like I'm talking about it separately, but I do see it all as, you know an integrated, whole, total uh, being that I am that has also that aspect doing that, I guess. <laughs> you know, and, and I want to shift the balance now. Oh, I don't know what I'm saying quite, but, um, you know, thank you, I guess. <laughs> I feel well, different. Well, be, here would be my first and biggest piece of input is regardless of what, your ego or your non-being mind says to you, put the pen to the paper on a daily basis and forgive. Mm -hmm. It will kick, it will scream, it will come up with everything you've trained it to. And not, not just you, but your generations have trained it into seeing to avoid dealing with what needs to be dealt with. But if you'll just, on a regular basis, use it, use the tool, you'll get free of that. Mm -hmm. Yep, it, you're right. It cuts through. Oh, oh, thank you for all those reminders. Thank you. Glad to be on the team. <laughs> yeah. I really appreciate the work that people are doing and, and uh, and I really was telling myself that I was doing it too, even amongst all my busyness, just with my awareness. Just, you know, and certain things were shifting, but, you know, they also can get caught and tied into story again instead of the real work. That's um, because you've trained it to worry. Hmm. And so you apply forgiveness to your non-being mind's capacity to worry, and you will collapse your capacity to worry. Mm -hmm. That's called forgiveness. Forgiveness is about removing from the mind what never belonged in the mind. Worry never belonged in the mind. Grief never belonged in the mind. Hatred never belonged in the mind. Vengeance never belonged in the mind. Sadness, pain, greed, hatred, vengeance, none of those things ever belonged. But our generations have trained it in, and it's such a huge, huge database. You know, in, a, in an intensive, one of the things I'll do usually at one point in the intensive, I usually, as you know, work on a four-by-eight whiteboard. So I've got a large four-by-eight um, whiteboard that I'm using, and I'll draw a circle around 
the whole outside edge. So now I've got a circle that's eight feet long by four feet high, or kind of a square uh, rectangle, uh, four by eight feet. And I'll draw that line and say, okay, now you take that space, and that's the size of your multi-generational database, the non-being mind that makes up the whole world that you see. And then, let's say I'm doing a nine-day intensive, I'll take my marker and I'll make the tiniest, smallest mark I can possibly make on that board and point out that now everything that I've said in the last nine days is this tiny, tiny dot, and this is the size of your database. Nothing I say will mean anything in the context of that database. It will not change it that tiny dot will just get sucked into that huge database and it will disappear. It will be some kind of a pleasant memory that was like, oh, yeah, well, that made sense. Yeah, oh, yeah, I saw why I could do and should do word sheets every day. Yeah, I'm going to do that. And then that, within a matter of days, gets sucked into that database. It's like, no, no, we have too much to do. Don't you know you have to do, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do that. It disappears. Knowing about this doesn't produce the result. Putting the pen to the paper and forgiving on a consistent daily basis is what will take that dot and empower that dot to bring transformation to that whole four by eight rectangle of data. Wow. Otherwise, it's just going to get sucked in and it'll look just like it looked yesterday. So here's my highest thought for you, and that is, you know, there was a point a few weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago, where we made an agreement that you text me every day when you finished your fifth worksheet, and I think that lasted two or three days. So my invitation is that today you make a new commitment, and that is to start out and just make like a really serious, I'll do this no matter what my non-being mind says, I'm going to do one worksheet a day, and when I finish that worksheet, I'm just going to text Michael saying I've finished it. Does that sound doable? And would you be willing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Oh, wow. Thank you. And we look forward to you being at the intensive for a whole quantum leap. <clears throat> Quantum week, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I hope to be there for the whole training, the whole um, month. Well, I, awesome. Yeah, I'll be I'll be in touch about that. Thank you. Fabulous, yeah. fabulous. All right. Well, are there any specific questions? I did have a, a conversation with Ed, and we you know went through a few suggestions as to what might support him, and he sounds like he's moving in the right direction. So we'll just hold the space for him. I really like what Carrie was saying on the show that I was listening to that Patricia was also on about um, energetic healing. You all were talking about it. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm hoping for him, too. You know, I think he's he's on it in his own way. Yep. We hold the space. Yeah, we do. Okay, Michael, I'll let you go. Thank you. Okay, we appreciate you, and I'll look forward to receiving that text before the day is out. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you. Blessings. Bye. Lots of love. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. We have two callers. Area code oh, cool. 970. You're first. All right, you guys. It's Carrie. Hello. And hi to Julie. Hey, young lady. And I, I appreciate what she was sharing. And, um, boy, I really got activated just in your introduction to the show and that – you know, talking about getting, I can't even repeat it all, but and I don't want to, but it really started activating for me that defensive part of me that I know is the survival mechanism, you know, from my childhood that says, oh, but, you know, it, I can feel those places inside myself where it's, difficult to go 100% and where there's ego and where there's competition and where there's defensiveness. And, you know, in this position where I am now, I can shed light on those things and feel the light activating those things as opposed to them 
<laughs> running the show. But, you know, there's definitely, I just wanted to share that that introduction he did and in, in kind of just talking about the depths of what we can access with this work. Really, just, just that little <laughs> monologue made all those old areas inside of me that are still stuck kind of shaking their boots a little bit. Awesome. Well, I'm delighted to be on the team and to, to get to help you to do that. That's fabulous. Yeah. So basically that's the reason I called, just to say that. And um, thank you. And keep. I'm going to keep on <laughs> doing worksheets. I've got a whole list to go home and do right now. So thanks. You know, one of the things we talked about, and I don't know if it's, you know, the last conversation we had about it, it sounded like your time is pretty uh, – pretty soft in, but um, the the impact of a group of people coming together for nine days on a total fresh and raw diet, doing this work in community is monumental. So if it happens to fit, then uh, my highest thought would be to uh, to go for it. I will um I'll look at the calendar again. I know where I am right now, July fourteenth, there's a big event taking place that I am on duty for. Um so uh, I was looking at what was after that. You know, I think the teacher's training is after that and I was thinking, what would it take for me to get all the way to Missouri and my dog and all that kind of stuff too. So um yeah. but I have to contemplate yeah, the nine-day Y intensive actually starts on uh, July the twenty-fourth. Twenty-third. So that twenty-third. Pardon me. Twenty-third. Okay. Yeah, we finished food, fun, forgiveness, and work on the twenty-first, and we have a day off, and so the twenty-third it starts. And that would be the one to do. Actually, the teacher training wouldn't be open uh, to you because you have to do the nine-day Y in order to do the teacher training. Okay. So. And the teacher training's after that, right? The teacher training follows that. We do the nine day Y. Actually, we we started on the twenty third in the evening. We'll finish the morning. Uh, the the that workshop finishes nine days later, in the morning, and then in the evening we'll go right into teachers training. So it's a continuous uh, seventeen becomes a seventeen day if it's done all at once. Okay. So. So well, anyway, if that you know, fits. Yeah, I have been contemplating the possibility, so um, we'll just see. I'll, I'll look at the calendar and I'll look at the map and kind of <clears throat> maybe check in a little bit. And cool, awesome. Put it, if you put it on the map. Uh, if you fly, if you fly and you'd fly into Springfield, Missouri. Okay. Thanks. Cool. All right. All right. So, are there any questions that? Um, that relate to this shaking in the boots thing that comes up when you hear that next level uh, that we can support you in getting through? I guess any suggestions you have on delving into that. I mean, my I guess my answer is always go do some worksheets. I mean, that's my answer to myself. So if you have any other suggestions. But i really aware I could feel for Julie talking about the ego. And, you know, I, I think one show you mentioned that, competition is one of our survival mechanisms with our power person and I could really relate to that and so that's been kind of present with me and then um, just realizing the it was just I think more of an awareness of those the defensive you know parts that are still in there that are um, that would like to be released. <laughs> right. I, I presume you've, I know you've listened to the archives on the uh, codependence work, but I presume you watched the, the video, the, the DVD, the two-hour one of the workshop? You know, I'm not positive if I've watched that one yet, and I actually got it out to watch it the other night and couldn't stay awake. So, um, <laughs> but it's kind, of, it's kind of the top one on my list. Michael? Yeah, that's where I'd suggest you go and uh, and move that. Tim, do you have a suggestion for us? Yeah, I just wanted to, to relate. This is the second person where we're talking about what I think is the same theme. So last last week when I had my – or the week a week ago this past weekend, 
I had this big event I was struggling with. It's about a nine-year event that was coming to fruition, and you gave me a mind shifter. So later that day, I did a worksheet on it, and then the next day I actually did the mind shifter work, and I had very strong back pain on the left side of my body. <clears throat> and I've had back difficulties over the years, and I, I've come to learn that it doesn't really flare up unless I'm denying emotional issues or processing them out. So on Wednesday morning, I went to a person that I work with almost every week, and we do an energy work that looks at, it's, it's a, an energy work that, basically follows the mind shifters, or I'm sorry, the uh, reality management worksheet. And right. what came out when we were doing that release was that there was upset in me that was resonated by this mind shifter that Michael gave me. And when I went and did the release and asked for you know help seeing what this is connected to, it went back to when I was nine years old in fourth grade. Well, what happened in nine years old when I was in fourth grade was I had a very stern nun as a as a teacher, and she would give homework every night, and I would go home and play and lie to people saying I had my homework done, and then I'd go to school the next day dreading it, but she'd say, do you have your homework? And I'd say yes, and she'd say, bring it up, and I would, you know, all, all but soil my pants day after day after day. And the connection was, and the person I was working with said, Oh, so the nun, when you were in fourth grade, saw right through you to the core of your issues and could stir up what you really needed to work on, just like Michael and the worksheet process can see right to the core and stir up what you really need to work on. And I did the breathing and the tapping and the releasing for that. Later that day, the pain shifted from the left side of my body to the right side, and the next day there was no pain. And I've done more worksheets on it, and I'll continue to do more. But the theme that seems to be up here for me is the power of these tools to help us get at what one part of our mind really doesn't want to look at. And it can be very intimidating. And that's why it's a good thing to have a support team and to have the willingness and the, the faith or the knowledge that it ends up being better when I empty the bag of garbage rather than just stuffing it and stuffing it and carrying it around with me. That's certainly the key, sir. So if I, if I track her down on Facebook, Michael, I'll introduce you to Sister Justin one of these days. Ah, okay, cool. <laughs> well, you know, the, uh, I was telling you the other day about the uh, intensives I used to do. Up, where there was a priest, a Roman Catholic priest and a nun who ran a retreat center in uh, Hartford uh, City, Indiana. Awesome, awesome people. Really, truly about supporting, really, truly doing their work and supporting people and doing their work. Uh, and I spent, oh, 10 or 12 years every once a year. I'd go up there and do a five-day weekend kind of thing. We'd start on Thursday and go through Sunday. And um, I'll never forget, actually, it was the first time that I did the codependence workshop. And Sister Maureen, and I'm sure she wouldn't uh, wouldn't object to me. She's just an awesome woman, uh, sat there shattered and in tears over what she had done to children. As a, as a nun in school, uh, and that was what she was, and she was like, I had no idea what I was doing to them. Uh, that's what I was told. That's how you, you know, save their souls or what have you. And, you know, she's just like wiping her brow with, oh, my God, what have I done? And this being, this, this woman is just so awesome and amazing in the way she supports people and the way she processes with people and is so there for people. But, you know, that's what her carbon-based memory was trained into. And, you know, that's just, that's what we do until we get a better idea. And, you know, the, the people that are trained into that dogma and that doctrine based in fear and you know we're gonna we're gonna beat you into salvation is um it it's it's the the ultimate trickster is this non being mind 
I'll get you to proclaim what a sinner you are, and that will save you from your sin. You know, and it just takes everything and turns it backward. That's what the non-being mind does. And when it comes to those power person dynamics in just about every religious system, and certainly military, in many cases, the whole cult idea is to get somebody to give up their current power person for a new one, and that is the person who's now setting the behaviors in motion, and one simply plays out those behaviors. And uh, the, the, the moment, Carrie, at which you gave up the direct experience of being love, of your human beingness, to buy into this is what I have to do in order to survive with my power person, there's your survival moment. There's the moment where we give up the direct experience of love and as a result, rage governs. And it's believed at that moment, and it happens so early, this is totally unconscious. I mean, this is happening to a two- or three-year-old child. It is believed that Because I depend upon this power person for my sustenance and support, if I don't do this, I'm literally dead. And the gateway, going back through the pain of that decision, which is a decision that's been going on in our bloodlines for a thousand generations, and dealing with the rage of having been forced to give up the direct experience of your human life of love, is huge. It's the biggest issue anybody will ever go back through. And I just support you being able, and I certainly understand, having made the choice to sit down and watch the video, why you couldn't stay awake, because in (laughs) all of that is such unconsciousness. It's just like, I have to check out. I have to check out. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm out of here. So I understand, and you absolutely have our support. And getting choked up as you say that, and you're... The very first, you know, what you said in the first few sentences, I just went, yeah, I was two years old. I mean, I can almost literally yep. remember, you know. Yep, I hear you. Know. Yep, cool. Thank you so much. Good stuff. I'll watch the video. Absolutely. I'll contemplate, I'll contemplate getting to Missouri and onward and forward. And thanks awesome. to, was that Dr. Tim? Thank you to him, too. That was really good. Cool. Okay, bye. Well, you have our support. All right. We appreciate you. Okay. All right. And, Tim, I don't know if I've said it lately, but I sure do appreciate you being on the show with us and uh, all the contributions that you make. Your uh, your work is awesome. Well, thank you. It's it's certainly paying huge dividends for me in my life, and and that's why I do it. It's, it's kind of like um, our friend in Oregon who's – uh, having difficulty doing worksheets, uh, I know that if I didn't keep doing the support group and if I didn't make myself show up for this um, Internet show on a regular basis, um, I would drift away from applying the work in my own life. I would get, <clears throat> because I've done it so many times with so many other tools, and uh, and I just, I I've seen how much better my life is when I, apply the tools, and so at every turn when I can, I I get myself back on track because I often find myself drifting away from it and going days without doing my tapping or doing my worksheets. or And so these these formats that that I constructed with the, the Tuesday groups to make the commitment to show up and that you've supplied with the Internet show – are just really good ways for me to keep myself in the flow whenever possible. And I appreciate it, and I thank you for the opportunity. Well, I I understand totally, and uh, it took me about six years uh, when I first started doing this work. I kind of did it on a part-time basis, and I came to the point where I realized the best way to be a full-time student was to be a full-time teacher of it. And, uh, and, And I can see, you know, in my own life, even still today, and I, and I know that our friend would, would frown at this probably still, but even today when I, when I am not doing workshops over an extended period of time, if I'm not doing worksheets, 
I can drift back into the old multi-generational database mindset and actually believe it's lies and it's frauds and it's insanity. And the, the fact that I teach it over and over and over and over again, I get to hear it. And that's, that's what it takes. Yeah, I've, uh, a number of years ago I was working with someone to build a, a training program for, for teaching people how to teach parenting skills, and she was asking me for the philosophy, and I heard myself saying, well, we want these students to know if they want to be really good at teaching parenting skills that the only way to master something or to become a master at something is to be a perpetually avid student of that principle or that technique. And then about three months later, I was listening to the, or reading The Way of Mastery, and I read the words that the master is someone who has mastered the art of always being a student. That's true. You know, I, I, there's there's no question that today Tiger Woods is on the golf course hitting golf balls. No question about it. I, I don't care who your favorite basketball or baseball star is. I guarantee that today they're on the court or they're on the, the playing diamond. And if you're not on the diamond playing, working at forgiving, then – and, and and people say, well, gee, you know why 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 you know I've been doing it for two weeks. Why isn't it all finished yet? Stop and recognize that each generation adds its information to your database, and you have in your genetics. You know, when they first started doing genetic research, they're saying, oh, you know, the DNA is ninety five percent junk. Well, they're changing that story as they're discovering, but the DNA is not ninety five percent junk. That's the hard drive that holds literally. And I mean this absolute, pure, literally, every thought, every feeling, every reality from every generation in your bloodline. And when you get under stress, the stress is up and the chips are down, the dumbest, most insane, rageful mind in your genetics is what will resonate and come forward and determine your behavior. If you don't use the tool when that comes forward, then that will simply be reinforced and become a new dynamic that controls you. In the ancient Aramaic, they said it this way, take care of the heart, for out of it are the issues in life. Take care of the heart means you do your work every day. You take care of the content of your own multi-generational database, which in Aramaic was called the heart, our modern language, we call it the unconscious, or we'd call it in this work more specifically, the dissociated mind. Take care and clean out what's in your dissociated mind, for out of that comes what controls and runs your life and defines you. And you don't get done cleaning up, you know, if, if you think, if you put it in computer terms, you know, you look at the uh, Windows operating system or you look at the uh, the Apple operating system, and it's, they've been in existence for less than a half a century or thereabouts. And they've had some of the most genius programmers and the most genius minds. And yet, when you're working on your computer, you'll notice it can take you days or weeks to overcome a simple little problem in that 50-year-old database done by geniuses. Your database is thousands of years old. And it has the input of the most insane minds in your bloodline. And when those things are resonated, they will come forward with an error message. What's the error message? The error message is always the same. There's some form of hostility or fear that you're feeling. That's telling you that the picture world you're seeing, that what's causing your feelings belongs to somebody else, is an error. That's your error message. Now, if you've ever sat down and tried to figure out how to clean up an error message on your computer, I know, fortunately, we've got computer tech. Michael J., thank you for being in our family and all the support you give us on computers. But without that, I've had times where I've spent days and days and days 
and still not been able to resolve. A simple problem in a thing that's been running for 50 years that's, I mean, it's so simple. All it does is run a screen, it runs a keyboard, it runs a speaker system, it runs a DVD player and a hard drive. I mean, that's all that's to it. It doesn't run eyes and ears and, and uh, genitals and digestion and breathing and brain and sound and touch. It doesn't even start to approximate what it takes to run all of those things. And that database has been in development for thousands of generations. Get ready. Be committed to doing your work. And on a consistent daily basis, take care of your heart, your unconscious, your dissociated mind, for out of it will come the next issue you get to look at. If you don't clean it out, it's what will define you. It will control your behavior. That's the work. And so Jeannie tells us we've got a couple of callers. Maybe we need to tap in and say hello to those callers. Jeannie? Eric has 607. You're on the air. Hey, it's Richard again. 607. Hey, we're Hi, blessed and highly favored, Richard. Good. Well, it's interesting that today's conversation is all about the ego because it seems to be the uh, – the theme of the last week for me uh, is the ego, <laughs> and uh, especially today as, uh, you know, a situation came up, and, uh, of course, I'm uh, doing massive amounts of worksheets to deal with my feelings today. <laughs> so it's it's interesting that all this stuff is being talked about today, and uh, I uh, just wanted to comment and say, uh, I, unfortunately, I missed the first part of the first four minutes, so I didn't hear that your your dialogue or monologue that you had at the beginning, which uh, Carrie was coming in and going. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm just uh, in that space now of, of uh, having to deal with a lot of ego stuff myself today. And you know, one of the things that I was writing about was, you know. You know, if we're beings of love and light, how do we live in that space of love and light all the time without, uh, uh, you know, and you sort of answered it and said you just keep working the worksheets out so you, the, the mind, the ego finally says, I give up. <laughs> so I guess that sort of answered my question is how do you learn to live in the space of love and light all the time without, uh, you know, succumbing to the ego in, in some respects. You just keep doing your work. That's what it keep takes. Doing work. Okay, well, that's what I'll keep doing then. All right, we appreciate your blessings. Have a good day. Hey, it's in the plan. Thanks for the call. All right, bye-bye. Okay, area code 561, you're on the air. Hi, Jeannie and Michael. It's Margaret and Boca Raton. Hi, Margaret. Welcome, Hi. young lady. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to call in and um, say hi and to let everybody know that we're having our Mind Shifters work group tonight in Boca Raton from 7 to 9. Cool. So you'll be at Dr. Love's tonight. The information's on the website, 7 o'clock. Exactly. Uh, we've got so much on our plate was flying out of here on Saturday. We were trying to work our time around. We were just talking about it about an hour ago about trying to get up there tonight, but unfortunately it's not going to work much as we'd like to. But uh, hopefully we'll get to connect when we get back from the Bahamas and uh, yeah. before we leave Florida. Yeah. Well, hey, we really appreciated you both coming by last week. That was wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That was fabulous. Yeah, and um, yeah. So um, I I appreciate you having the address and everything on the website, and um, yeah, and we look forward to everybody in the area that can come to be there tonight. And we're we're expecting a nice group, and we're planning to, you know, to heal together. Cool. Fabulous. Well, we will be there, and we will look forward to uh, – or pardon me, we will not be there tonight, but we'll hope that everybody else that's in hearing range that's in South Florida will come and join you in Boca tonight at Dr. Love's uh, studio, and uh, we appreciate you guys uh, just out of this world. Thank you very much. We appreciate you both right. so much, too. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay. Blessings. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. So, Jeannie, do we have any other callers? 
Nope, that was the last one. We've got about 10 minutes, 646-200-4169. Press 1. That puts you in queue. We'd love to hear from you. And is Carrie still with us? Uh, no, she has dropped off. Okay. Okay. Well, Dr. Tim, what other wisdom do you have to share with us today? Questions, thoughts, answers? Well, the, it's just... It's interesting how it's coming back in another theme, another cycle of people who are awakening to the awareness that a physical pain that they're experiencing is really about negative energies they've stored in their system. And um, so there have been a number of people in the past couple of weeks, including myself, who've had pain, and instead of turning to drugs or food or rage, turning to the tools and removing the angry or fearful or hurt or scared energies, and then be just shocked to realize that the pain is gone. Um, so I just want to encourage people to open their minds to the idea that regardless of what kind of pain they're experiencing, if they're willing to pick up a worksheet <clears throat> and keep their breath open, or do a mind shifter and keep their breath open, that they might well find that rather than beginning a cycle of going to doctors and taking medicine, which will continue for years, if not decades, into the future, they can break the cycle, remove the energies from their system that don't belong, stay with the pain, and watch it dissolve. Well, several, several years ago, I had a, a private practice here in South Florida, and I remember working with this one gentleman and we had this really, really severely debilitating pain in his shoulder. And we went to work. We were doing some still point work and some energy field work. And all of a sudden, this pain, which for, from the time it started was in his shoulder, and of course it was physical, um, all of a sudden it was in his other shoulder. I mean, literally, as we went into that shoulder started to move it using the energy field work to realign the antenna and put it back in, in, in proper flow, it literally went to his other shoulder. So he's like, oh, my God, this is physical, isn't it? Well, you don't have any physical. You've only got an energy system. You know, start to comprehend that. And, of course, that's just about impossible for the mind to start to, to really understand until you do some work. And, you know, that's what the uh, Why Is This Happening to Me Again workshop is all about. And you can go to the uh, the website and download the book free. Of course, we'd love it if you'd buy a copy from us, too. That, uh, that's one of the ways we keep everything that we do going and, and supported. If you're finding this show supports you, then, you know, go to the website, hit the Donate button and support us. That's what keeps us on the road and keeps us work moving around the globe, but beyond that, download the book, start to read and understand, build the brain cells for understanding something different. So anyway, we go from the shoulder where this physical pain had been for months, and we move to the other shoulder, start working there, and all of a sudden, the pain in his other shoulder disappears, and the pain in his, is in his knee. I don't, I don't remember, this goes back 20 plus years I don't remember how many places we chased it to, but it was like five or six different places in his body. It just went from place to place to place to place. I mean, it was, and it was so clear. And that was a really strong teaching opportunity for me to get to see that oh, this isn't a physical system. This is an energetic system. Einstein was right. On such things as matter, we have been all wrong. What we have heretofore called matter is energy. Energy whose vibrations have been so lowered as to be perceptible to the senses. Quote Einstein, there is no matter. 
Max Planck is receiving the Nobel Prize in Physics, and he says, as a man who spent his entire life studying matter, I can tell you this much. There is no matter as such. Our entire world is made of succeedingly smaller patterns of vibratory fields nested one within another within another. If you have pain, what have you nested in your field that needs to be removed? Stop tricking yourself. This has got nothing to do with the physical because it doesn't. Say, well, yeah, but it only happens when. Well, right. So, so when the stimulus is there, your physiology tells you what you've stored in the tissue. Now, who do you need to stop blaming? Who do you need to talk about in order to access that directly instead of keeping yourself dissociated from that to go into that tissue and remove what never belonged? And when you do that, here's what's going to happen. Dr. Tim, you tell them what's going to happen. The pain fades. I had a woman who came into the uh, office because she had a, a road rage incident where someone tried to run her off the road and kill her, and as a result, she got all banged up, and she had a very young child of her own in the car with her, and she was scared that the child was going to die, and there was a lot of emotional turmoil. And and um, she, we did some trauma reduction t- uh, work with her, which is very similar to the energy work you do in the still point breathing. And, and so she left feeling very good, after the first session, she was able to drive herself to the second session, and by the third session was feeling very, very good. She had some pain in her shoulder, though, so we did some more energy work, and the pain left. So she had two weeks of having no pain, and she came back, and the pain had come back, and I asked her, when did it come back? And she said, well, I know exactly when it came back. She said, I went to visit my physical doctor, And I was sitting on the table waiting for him to come in, and I felt great. And I was going to tell him how great I felt. And he came in the room, and he was filled with anger. And he said to me, have you sued that guy yet? Have you gotten that idiot off the road? Have you gotten that danger? Have you taken charge of what you need to do to get him put away so he doesn't hurt other people the way he hurt you? And she said, and I felt that pain come back in my shoulder, and it's been there ever since. And we did the energy work. And she again left the session with no pain. And I said, you might want to consider getting a different doctor. Now, of course, if they'd gone to a physician that was on the planet 2,000 years ago, and and, and let's remember in the Aramaic the word sin is an archery term. When you fire at the target and you miss the bullseye, the scorekeeper yells sin. And if Yeshua had done that session... What he would have said to her in Aramaic is, go and sin no more. (laughs) Don't go back to that vibration that you put into your tissue that causes your pain, or you're going to be back in trouble. You know, and, and this is not an admonition about some kind of moral issue. You have an energy system that has a design. It is designed for certain frequencies, and certain frequencies only. If you put something else in... Your system's going to say, ouch, that hurts like hell. And when you become responsible for it, you can remove your self-created personal hells. The creator didn't create a place for you to go and suffer. We do it to ourselves. And we're down to about 45 seconds or so, Dr. Tim, so thank you for your input. You are much appreciated. And we are all systems go. Uh, intensive season starting on July the 13th, July the 12th. And, uh, of course, our show goes on five days a week. We invite you to bring a stranger to the show tomorrow, share the tools, pass on the links to the website, to the book, to the tools, and we'll look forward to seeing you create the best year yet of your eternal life. Blessings. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice and his wife, Jeannie, who present the internal Aramaic process of forgiveness. Michael and Jeannie are here every Monday through Friday on Earth Angels Radio. For more on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.yagain.com. That's www.yagain.com. 
W H Y A G A I N dot com.